Up. This evening's newscast is sponsored in part by ACS, because you want solutions. Tip Top Chevrolet, Cadillac, Ethel's Restaurant, and North Rim Bank. Thanks for joining us for this Tuesday broadcast of the Fairbanks Evening News. I'm Melissa Godshaw. And I'm Bob Miller. Members of Congress say the oil industry is manipulating the market in order to get your money. Senators today produced a report which they believe shows industry's attempts to cut supplies in order to raise the price of gasoline. But executives say it's the world oil prices that will determine the cost of gas. Here with details is News Center 11's Seth Linden in tonight's Washington Report. So why is it you're shelling out more for gas at the pump? According to a Senate report released today, you're paying more because oil executives want it that way. They're cutting the supply of gas to make filling up your car more expensive. Oil companies can act to limit supply and from time to time spike prices to maximize profits. The Senate report includes major oil companies' internal memos, which suggest attempts to limit supply. Some of those companies have strong roots in Alaska, including British Petroleum and ExxonMobil. Executives from those corporations denied any wrongdoing at a hearing today and said gas prices are determined by market conditions such as supply and demand. Senators, though, said that answer was unsatisfactory. They produced a 1999 BP document in which executives discussed opportunities to increase Midwest gas prices. Strategies included shutting down refining capacity and shipping fuel to Canada to keep prices up. BP acknowledged the memo but said the strategies were never implemented. The business unit leaders would never have taken it forward. I mean, these were rejected immediately. Uh, the people were counseled on the inappropriateness of it, and it never went any farther than that. Other memos include correspondence from Exxon, which advises the company not to conduct deals that support importing oil to the West Coast. Material also shows Mobile advising against importing gasoline, saying it could reduce profits. One senator asked oil executives today if they could do more to prevent price spikes. Executives responded by saying they're doing everything they can and that they need the government's help. That answer seemed to offer little satisfaction to senators and probably even less satisfaction to consumers at the pump. Seth Linden, New Center 11, Washington. A 50% loss in profits for oil giant British Petroleum. Low prices for crude drove down gas prices and most of the other products BP sells. That means a loss of more than a billion dollars for the transnational corporation. BP released their earning figures today. Last year at this time, BP made more than six billion dollars in profit. This year, not quite three. BP chief lord John Brown says the weak global economy is the cause. Camden Toohey, Special Assistant to Interior Secretary Gail Norton, was the guest speaker today at the Fairbanks Chamber of Commerce luncheon. New Center 11 reports on what the Department of Interior actually does and the current priorities of the Secretary. Cam Toohey has been called a true son of the great state of Alaska by Interior Secretary Gail Norton. Toohey was named Special Assistant last June, and the oil lobbyist will advise Norton on issues related to managing Alaska's 270 million acres of Interior Department land. It's a job that has a lot of other issues other than oil and gas. Um, we deal with uh, subsistence, um, native lands, uh, national parks, refuges, a lot of conflicts within those regions and frankly I have not been able to spend as much time on oil and gas development issues in Anwar in particular as I'd like. Since the Senate voted down opening Anwar to drilling, it gives the interior more time to focus on other sources of income for the state. You can't talk about future oil and gas development in the North Slope unless you have a pipe to be able to bring it down, so that's real important to us. Uh, secondly is allowing and permitting and, and allowing lease sales in the northeast corner and also the northwest corner of the, of the MKRA. So we have to go through quite a few processes to allow that to occur. We're working on offshore development and being prepared for a natural gas pipeline. 
Despite opposition by the Senate's new Democratic majority, Tui says his group is still lobbying hard for drilling in the refuge. Melissa Godshaw, New Center 11. The act of immobilizing caribou with drugs by the Department of Fish and Game has been stopped due to the unusual rate of capture-related deaths among the caribou. New Center 11's Angeli Eldridge gives us the details. Caribou are dying and no one knows for sure why. Over the past week, we've discovered a higher than normal rate of deaths in caribou that have been handled by biologists, that have been tranquilized, um, radio collared, measured, and released. Uh, normally, the mortality rate is about 5% or less, and in this case, we're right about at 30, 32%. With the procedure done several times prior with no change in drugs, the Department of Fish and Game is perplexed. Putting a team together to try to figure out between the, the drugs, between the caribou themselves, and between the biologists who are in the field doing it, what caused this to happen. So on April 22nd, when the problem was noted by biologists who were monitoring collared animals, an interagency effort was made. We have five people on the special team. We have a wildlife biologist, we have a disease and parasite specialist, we have two veterinarians, and a federal biologist also, in addition to the state. Blood and drug analysis are currently underway, but it will take about three months for any certain results. Angela Eldridge, New Center 11. Driving in Fairbanks is not necessarily hazardous to your health, but it might be hazardous to your car. Our unusually wet weather is creating potholes all around the city, and that's only the beginning. New Center 11's Jeff Littlehale reports. A combination of wet snow on Friday and rainy weather up until yesterday has created a very noticeable problem in Fairbanks. Puddles that border on the size of ponds. A combination of the ground still being frozen and some storm drains still frozen as well, the water has nowhere to go. That fact is wreaking havoc on our roads. If the road has a crack in it, uh, water gets underneath the uh, asphalt and into the sub-base, uh, moves the sub-base around, pushes up the asphalt, and then as traffic drives over the asphalt, it pushes it back down and cracks, and then basically destroys the road. An unusually dry winter has been completely turned around to one of the wettest Aprils ever. We've never had this much water in this short a period uh, that I can remember, other than 1967 when the flood hit. Between the wet snow we got on Friday and the rain we've been getting in the last couple of days, it's left some very noticeable problems around the city of Fairbanks, ones like this huge puddle that we have behind me. But the real problem now lies beneath these puddles. These roads have had some serious damage occur to them. It's a problem that may leave Fairbanks four or five years before they're able to catch up with it. The Public Works Department is patching up the potholes around the city to alleviate the problem for now but an even bigger problem may be down the road. They're spending money that uh, right now would be for next uh, winter, next uh, October, November, December snow removal. The hope is that the patched potholes will last for about six months, but with the state in such a budget crunch, there's no telling when Fairbanks will get the money they need to fix them permanently. Jeff Littlehill, News Center 11. Coming up next, students at UAF are approaching the end of the semester, but they're not out of the woods yet. Oh, and also, first graders from Weller Elementary return home from a trip around the globe today. They get a warm reception from their families. Those stories, sports, and weather coming up next. Stay with us. Business report is brought to you by William R. Fairbanks Investments. Courthouse Square, 250 Cushman, Suite 3E. Call 456-3678.
Ethel has just finished remodeling and would like to introduce her new chef. Now you can enjoy a meal fit for a king on the south side of Fairbanks. Sample the new dinner menu in the tastefully decorated dining room. There are killer steaks cut to order and charbroiled to perfection. Flavorful catfish, blackened halibut Caesar salad, and breaded fresh halibut are some other mouth-watering entrees. There's even a salad bar filled with fresh vegetables and more. Of course, you can still have breakfast all day or make a quick stop for lunch. Ethel's, where they love to know your name. Have you ever wanted to learn about the stock market and how to research stocks using online resources? Well, here's your chance. The University of Alaska Fairbanks School of Management is offering a summer finance camp for middle and high school students. Each camp will have cash prizes for top stock presentations and performing portfolios. Adult sessions available as well. For more information, contact the Financial Education Program at 474-6518 or visit the website. The University of Alaska Fairbanks School of Management, helping create new industry leaders for Alaska's future. For years now, we've been telling you no matter what problem your vehicle is having, bring it in to Kent's Fairbanks Alignment. We're always telling our customers we do more than just alignments. But the truth is, although we repair everything on your vehicle, we specialize in alignments. It's so important to our business, we put it in our name. Kent's Fairbanks Alignment and Auto Repair. 1997 Ford Escort. Steering wheels, shakes and wiggles. Shakes and wiggles? Yeah. Bring it in. If it shakes and wiggles, bring it in to Kent's Fairbanks Alignment. For a videotaped copy of any story you've seen on News Center 11, call 458 1830. Quota International is a nonprofit organization that raises funds to benefit better speech and hearing programs, as well as disadvantaged women and children. They presented some of those funds today to Love Inc. in the amount of $2,000. It'll go to the Independent Mobility Program. The program helps underprivileged women get back to work. Quota International also gave $4,900 to the North Star Council on Aging and our emergency food program. Quota is hosting their annual fundraiser this October. SAM is our major fundraiser, mm -hmm. and that's always the first Saturday in October. Mm -hmm. And this year will be our 40-something SAM. Right. Uh, the theme this year is you want to be in pictures. It's going to be a 40s theme. Mm -hmm. um, the funds and proceeds from this year's sham will be directed to the um, Breast Cancer Detection Center. So we're pretty excited about giving to that. As we approach the end of the school year, students are preparing for their finals. Up at UAF, fine art students are graded on their projects. One student, Michelle Duvall, in her senior year, now cum cumulating six years of hard work in ceramics. Her final thesis is a presentation of her creations, which are now on display at the UAF Art Museum at Davis Hall. She says she gets most of her creative ideas and motivation from family and surroundings. This theme. Well, uh, the title of my show is Decadence, which is kind of a really loaded word, mm -hmm. um, but it has to do with kind of taking simple daily like rituals, like drinking coffee with your friend that visits or your boyfriend or girlfriend or anyone, and um, taking those rituals and creating um, pottery that you use for those rituals. Michelle's art show on ceramic pottery will be on display until Friday. First graders from Weller Elementary School returned from a trip around the globe today and they received a celebration along with a warm greeting from their parents. New Center 11 Stacy Hammett has that story. In February, first graders at Weller Elementary School stepped aboard the SS Weller for an imaginary trip around the world. It's a great learning experience for the kids because they learn about the cultures, they learn about the different ways people are brought up, the different foods, and it's, it's just really beneficial for my oldest son went through it last year. Well, we're learning about um, Ireland and England. The kids remember it, the kids talk about it, the kids learn so much about other countries other than just from a book. They learn how other people live, they learn what their um, traditions and customs are. Joyce Hillward was there when the social studies program got its start 18 years ago and this year was the only teacher left still participating. Math using uh, yesterday we did Aztec counting uh, we learned to count in Chinese we learned to count in Spanish so in just every aspect of school we try to incorporate as much about the country that we're studying at the time my favorite place was um, Ireland because, um, because I'm from Ireland because I know 
After the long voyage through all the countries, these little travelers ended their trip today with food and a presentation of what they learned throughout their journey. Stacey Hammett, News Center 11. And speaking of around the world... I believe Alex Barta is here with a preview from the world of sports. Alex? Well, it's celebration time in Montreal, and one of the NHL's top-seeded teams gets bumped out of the playoffs in the first round. And news out of the NBA as the architect of the Lakers heads to the Bluff City, and the NBA prepares for a 7-foot, 6-inch import. Stay with us. Sports is coming up next. Friends who sponsored in part by Fairbanks Title Agency. You know, when we're talking about getting the best deal on a new car, truck, van, or SUV, some people will say the name of the game is offense. Others will tell you it's defense. Me, I gotta say it all comes down to special teams. And what makes a sales team so special? A special sales team is made up of people who take the time to listen to what you have to say, then work hard to get you into the automobile you want for the right price. So when you're looking to buy your next car from a sales team that stands out above the rest, check out the special sales team at Aurora Motors. I took Fen Fen. I thought everything would be fine. I had no idea I could be hurt by it. I saw Bill Azar on TV and I called him. He got me a free echocardiogram and it showed that my heart had been affected by the Fen Fen. I'm attorney Bill Azar. If you've ever used Fen Fen, an echocardiogram is the best way to determine the extent of your injuries. Call me now to see if you qualify. Now I'm part of the $12 billion settlement. This may be your last chance to receive money damages. Now is the best time to join America Online. The AOL is very easy to use. Anyone can do it. You've got mail. I love AOL email. Click and send. Everybody I know is on AOL. I do feel good knowing that AOL has parental controls. And if you want high-speed service, America Online has it for you. AOL makes broadband easy. Being on the phone and AOL all at the same time. With the broadband, everything is so much faster. It's the best thing we ever did. Welcome. AOL keeps getting better and better. America Online. So easy to use, no wonder it's number one. Call 1-800-4-ONLINE. Why are these people so happy? They know what it means to be a satisfied customer at Tip Top Chevrolet Cadillac. Tip Top listened to what I wanted and just made it real easy to, to make the deal. They're awesome. There's no other word but awesome. They're not out to make a profit one time and then see you down the road like so many others are. I've had the car close to a year now. The, the car is just as smooth a ride as it was the day I got it. What more can you ask when you have good professional people helping you get the best deal and, and good service? The Alaska Club Fairbanks is your fitness solution. Members enjoy club benefits at any Alaska club in the state, including two locations in Fairbanks. You need commercial or retail space for your business? Call the commercial real estate specialists at Tom Roberts Realty. They have many great locations available in a variety of price ranges. If you want to lease, buy, or sell business property, call Tom or Chad Roberts at Tom Roberts Realty. The Interior Sports Person of the Month Award is brought to you by Alaska Club Fairbanks and Tom Roberts Realty. Welcome back to sports. I'm Alex Barta, the defending Stanley Cup champion. Colorado Avalanche were pushed to the limit in their first round series with Los Angeles. The Kings and the Lanch were tied at three games apiece coming into last night's Game 7 in Denver. Let's take you out to highlights of this one. Scoreless in the second period when Chris Drury with some excellent skating and some nice stick moves to go along with it. He goes top shelf to beat Felix Potvan. That's his second playoff goal. It's one to nothing, Colorado. About a minute later, Alex Tenge knocks in the rebound to make it two to nothing, Avalanche. Now Colorado, near the end of their power play, Steve Reinprecht, he's able to get his own rebound, flip in the wrist shot, three to nothing, Colorado Avalanche. Now, Avalanche goaltender Patrick Waugh, really the story of this one, he makes the glove save on Ziggy Poffy right here. Waugh had 23 saves and he earns himself a shutout as Colorado wins this one four to nothing. They win the series four games to three. And now we take you out to Montreal. This was the scene last night as the eight seeded Canadiens defeated the top seeded Boston Bruins. Final score in this game was two to one Montreal. They go on to win the series four games to two. Well, the NHL's Kings are out of the playoffs, but the NBA's Kings had a chance to move into the second round. They led the Jazz two games to one and had a chance to end Utah's season 
with a win. We pick this one up in the second quarter. Doug Christie finds Chris Weber for the slam. Kings up by 10, 38-28. Third quarter, Christie to Weber one more time. This time it's a reverse jam for Weber, 50-48 to Sacramento. More from Christie in the fourth, this time a little defense. Greg Ostertag grabs the rebound. Christie steps in front of the pass. He gets the layup and the foul, 71-62 Kings. But the Jazz keep it close. Carl Malone with the spin around the jump hook. That ties the game up at 76. With the Kings up by six, John Stockton. He nails the three. That cuts the lead to three. But on the other end of the court, Mike Bibby's jumper would seal the win for Sacramento. Kings go on to win this one 91-86. They win the series three games to one. Well, the Memphis Grizzlies have hired the architect of the Los Angeles Lakers to help rebuild their franchise. Jerry West is the Grizzlies' new president of basketball operations. West will make $5 million per year in Memphis. He will be in charge of rebuilding a team that in six seasons has the all-time lowest win percentage in NBA history. The Grizzlies do have two young players to build around, NBA Rookie of the Year Paul Gasol and all-rookie team member Shane Battier. Now, an interesting side note on West, he was the original model for the silhouette on the NBA logo. While the NBA might be the land of the Giants, but even the NBA's tallest players will be looking up next season. That's because 7-foot, 6-inch, 255-pound Chinese center Yao Ming has been released from his pro contract in Shanghai and is cleared to enter the NBA. Ming arrived in Chicago where he will hold a private workout for 22 NBA teams. He is expected to be one of the two, first two players selected in this year's draft. Yao, who will turn 22 in September, is free from his contract with the Shanghai Sharks after leading them to the championship just last week. Well, that's all the time we have for sports for tonight. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned. Mike Schultz is in after this break with your weather. Is your house getting a little crowded? Maybe you need a Northrim home equity loan. Hey, what did he just say? You can use the equity in your home to add on that extra room you need. Apply for a home equity fixed rate loan now and improve your home. I got to go to Northrim Bank. Northrim's home equity fixed rate loan. Stop by any Northrim branch and apply today. Your interest may even be tax deductible. What's wrong with your hearing? Let's go to Northrim Bank. Northrim Bank. Customer first service. If you want your next minivan to be a lot more than just practical, you definitely want to check out the Mazda MPV. The body of a minivan and the soul of a sports car. Nimble handling with very responsive steering and power. A 200 horsepower V6 engine plus versatility you've never seen in minivans. Cargo capacity plus second row power windows. Not to mention alloy wheels and sporty front fog lights. Who says you can't have it all in a minivan? Test drive the Mazda MPV today at Cook's Import Center, corner of Danby and Johansson. And remember, if you're not shopping on our corner, you're paying too much. Building dreams together, working side by side. From the dreams of explorers came Phillips, Alaska. Fifty years later, we continue to build on those dreams. Hand in hand with the hardworking men and women of Alaska, we're creating new opportunities, strengthening our future, and rising above the challenges. Because at Phillips, Alaska, we see potential in every day. Building dreams. Since 1965, Northland Wood has been one of the biggest suppliers of lumber and materials for Alaska's interior. From permanent wood foundations, 2x4s to 2x12s, TJIs, board and bat insulation, plywood, sheetrock, roofing materials, and a whole lot more. For over 30 years, helping Alaskans build the great Northland. Northland Wood, on Cushman, just south of Van Horn Road. Clouds cleared out today, you got a good chance to see the Alaska Range as the storm clouds hovering on the distance are bringing our weather change this evening. As far as conditions right now, 53 for the overnight uh, overcast skies, say the daytime high 54, the overnight low 41, barometer falling 2989, winds out east at 7, humidity 74%. Records, how about the record high 75 in 1960, record low of 4 in 1937, that compares to normal high of 52, normal low of 29. Sunrise this morning, 522, sets this evening at 1019, giving us 16 hours, 56 minutes of possible sunshine, not quite seven minutes of uh, daylight from yesterday. All right, as far as our temperatures, Annette, 69 degrees down over southeast Alaska, 61 degrees at Ketchikan, 72 at Whitehorse. Again, barrel the overnight low of 10 degrees, 14 for their high day, a little bit of rain and snow over the northwest part of the state. 
Across the interior, we have a mix of rain and snow, mainly rain around the McGrath area, and then we have cloudy skies across the North Gulf Coast. In the interior, temperatures showing very nice mild temperatures, 54 at Fort Wainwright, Allison Air Force Base 57, Delta Junction 57, Hebe 52, North Pole 53, 55 at Fox, 54 at Esther, and 56 degree reading for Ninana. Lower 48 weather. Let's go on down there and show you again more strong. Uh, strong thunderstorms across the uh, central plains, mainly over parts of Kansas, Oklahoma, uh, Missouri, Arkansas, out west, a little bit of rain shower and thunder shower activity too. As far as uh, storms this morning, uh, moving across parts of Nebraska, the heaviest storms moving across eastern Texas, then through Arkansas into Tennessee, Kentucky, Mississippi, and Alabama. And last night, a pretty good light uh, display put on around Dallas Fort Worth, a lot of rain falling. At the same time, the rain was hail, not big as yesterday, but still quite a bit of hail and a lot of flooding being reported in some of the rural areas there. No tornadoes to report, that's good news. Tomorrow's forecast, more thunderstorms expected over uh, the Appalachians and the Ohio Valley, rain across the central plains, hot down to the south over the Florida Peninsula, cool over the northeast. Heading on back to Alaska, our satellite picture showing a lot of moisture moving across uh, the, uh, from the Bering Sea across the state. We'll go to our next satellite picture and show you the, uh, again, you can see a lot of activity moving across from the west to the east. The interior satellite picture showing, uh, we'll go to that, uh, I'm clicking, it's not there, help me out, guys, there it is. You can see, again, a lot of moisture moving there. And we have a radar picture for you showing you that the radar is indicating the moisture is not too far away. We'll go to the next shot and show you, there it is, there's the radar right there, there's Fairbanks, and the radar is showing that the, the snow and rain is just to our northwest. As far as tomorrow's forecast is concerned, we're looking at blizzard conditions over the northwest part of the state, lots of sunshine over the southeast, and rain and snow across the central interior, more rain down to the south. Our forecast, uh, we have an advisory for you. The Department of Transportation has closed the road at mile 47 on the Steves Highway near Buster Creek because of a washout. Lots of wa high water there, and heavy snow is possible in the higher elevations of the Tanana Valley tonight. Our forecast for the Fairbanks area, cloudy with rain developing later, turning to snow four inches in the higher elevations and just an inch here in town, the low of 35. Tomorrow's forecast calling for snow diminishing to flurries, a couple more inches. And then we're looking for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, cloudy to partly cloudy skies, uh, mid 40s for the highs, overnight lows in the upper 20s. And April was the wettest month of all on record for snow and rainfall combined. And on that wet note, that's gonna do it from all of us here at the News Center. Have a great night, drive safely. We're the Ackerley Group, outstanding media and entertainment companies. NBC Wednesdays.